Welcome back to 2022. Uh, this is our first uh, video of the series. Uh, in my hand is a tongue tester and every single person that works with water or electricity or whether you're finding leaks should have one of these. I'm going to make three short videos. This first video is if you're a leak detector or you work with hot water cylinders and you want to know if the element and thermostat are working correctly and we'll focus just on that and we'll do a short quick sweet one just about using this with a hot water cylinder the second video is if you're a utility locator and how do you use this to trace your drains and to trace pups then the third video we'll do is we'll go to our db board behind behind us over there or behind colin and i'll show you how to use this to right size your solar system for your house and how to use an ammeter or a clamp meter or a tongue tester to right size for your house so let's get on to the first video is about leak detection and geyser maintenance if i've got a leak on a system it's either on the hot or it's on the cold if it's on the hot water because you've done a pressure test and the video is not about how to find the difference but once you've determined if it's on the hot water it's your duty to switch off the geyser's electricity but you don't always want to climb up into the ceiling so that you go to the db board and you flick the switch down and there's a little trick that we're going to show you how to see what size is the geyser by determining the size of the element with this device without getting into the ceiling you can see the size of the element so let's go straight to the the geyser that we've installed um, the second video will be focusing on utility location so um, we've got a little cylinder installed here uh, if you you will find faults i found one or two um, we'd love to get your comments and the guys that are coming on the training uh, in january and february can give the comments on it but let's get stuck into it so the first things first is i've isolated the skeezer and the power is off so in your bag you normally have a set of leads and you have a tongue tester and then you also have a thermocouple so what i want to do is check for voltage first so you'll put your leads in for voltage and my advice is to buy a true rms tongue tester and this tongue tester can check dc and it can check ac um, the reason why you want a true rms is if you're going to start doing variable speed drives with pumps and you get called out to to look at all sorts of installations the true rms doesn't just average it gives you the true amps um so the first things first is how much volts do we have in south africa 220 volts this tongue tester will work in the states as well with 110 volts you're just going to have double the amps so the first things first is we're going to switch the isolator on I've just switched it on and I'm going to put my terminals on the black and the red and I'm going to put it on and we're going to see that we have got 215.2 volts 215 volts so in South Africa you're not going to get pure 220 volts so I want to show you on the calculator we'll we'll simplify Ohm's law and on my calculator over here we say that you're supposed to have 220 volts and we say 3000 watts because this is a three kilowatt and most of you are going to be working on three kilowatt elements in south africa so you say 3000 watts divided by 220 volts gives me 13.6 so if i want to know if this element inside here is functioning correctly according to ohm's law it should be giving me approximately 13.6 amps i want you to think of amps as flow rate so this thing now becomes like a water meter it's not a pressure gauge because the voltimeter is your pressure gauge think about volts as pressure so we put the volts on there and we're getting a volt of 214 volts so it's at six volts under what it should be but when i put the tongue around it and there's a coil on here and when i put a cable through here 
this thing starts measuring the flow of electricity or amps and uh, named after some French dude called Ampere. Mm. Um, so what you do is you put the clamp meter around either the black wire and check it's reading 12.3 but if I move you see those little indicators there you can see there's a there's a stripe on there that's actually the optimal place for it to be and if I move the tongue tester up I get 12.8 amps and if I bring it down I'm getting 12.3 amps so please guys it's not an exact exact science it's just for you as a plumber to say hmm it's a three kilowatt element it's approximately four amps per kilowatt so four eight twelve but it's a little bit more than four it's four point five so it's thirteen point you know six according to the calculator so I'm getting just under thirteen which is telling me that uh, and remember there I'm getting 13 now and remember we're not getting pure 220 volts so don't be very strict with this now watch what happens when I clamp this around both the red and the black it cancels it out and look at the reading it's 0, 0.008 now the reason why you're getting some stuff is that there's an electromagnetic field here that's interfering and when we do the next video on utility location and how to use this baby to find uh, uh, drains <laughs> and to find things um, then you'll see that understanding the flow of electrons is incredible because it opens up your mind because as a as a person working on a on a geezer and please I'm not at all saying that plumbers should be electricians we are merely doing diagnostics you are merely diagnosing you are not doing an installation you're not rewiring anything you're merely diagnosing your your cylinder and you say hmm i've got a finger on the pulse of this cylinder i know think of it as a water meter i know the flow rate because the voltage is the pressure and the amps is the flow rate so now we put it around the red wire and i'm getting 12.1 12.4 it's vacillating, it's jumping up and down, and I put it around the black wire, I'll get the exact same, 12.4. And here's a very interesting thing. At ESCOM, they've got these huge, 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 big um, generators. And the beautiful thing about, about electricity, it's almost like spiritual, because everything works in this perfect circle of 360 degrees. So there's three points at every 120 degrees on the generator, whether you're at Kubert Power Station, which is, um, which is nuclear powered, or which is Lataba Power Station, uh, where we're relining, which is, is coal-fired, you've still got a 360 degree generator. And every 120 degrees comes one phase off this thing. And 120 times three is 360. The harmonics of electricity is absolutely amazing and we will look at it in the utility location uh, a video of the harmonics and how to understand uh, uh, how current flows through conductive items but i'm going to put this into hertz and i've set the hertz let's take this is a brand new ammeter take that little thing off can you see the hertz there it says hertz and i'm going to put put this onto the the thermostat to get power and get a proper connection and there you have it 50 hertz so what you're getting is 50 hertz and 12 amps but if we move it up a little bit we'll get a better we get we get 12.4 amps and if we change this uh, to volts um, then you can see that you've got uh, 213 volts and 12.5 amps look how much information you've got on this on this device now now you know that you've got 50 hertz in america they've got 60 hertz which means that the magnet in the in the generator has a north pole and a south pole and every time that magnet changes poles you get this ex not explosion but this this uh, expansion and contraction that's why it's called alternating current because the power is going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and in our utility location video we'll talk about alternating current and you, you study it on the course so every time the magnet at, the, at the, the, the generator changes polarity, you're getting this expansion and contraction of, of the electrons and the, and the neutrons. And 
you, you, you're getting 50,000 cycles per second and those harmonics can be traced. This simple, simple little device will tell you. So what you do is you go to the DB board and you find the circuit breaker and you find the Giza circuit breaker and you put this around the clamp. Let's say you close the ceiling up already and you say, hmm, I wonder if that Giza is working fine. Did I remember to turn it on? Hold on. Let's see. And you can actually see if the geezer, if the thermostat's kicked in or kicked out or it's still, you can actually see how many amps it's pulling. So if it's a four kilowatt element, you're probably going to be pulling between 16 and 18 amps. If it's a two kilowatt element, you're going to be pulling at about eight to nine amps. If it's a three kilowatt element, you're going to be on average 12, 13, maybe if you've got extra voltage. I mean, just now, about two hours ago, I was measuring 230 volts here. So... This is not pure sine wave, perfect uh, stuff that you're getting. Uh, but I thought that will just be a very cool little introduction. Um, and I would send all my teams out with one of these. I wouldn't let them do a, a hot water cylinder without checking that it's actually drawing amps. Flow rate. Next video we will do on utility location. Thank you.